Good evening, everyone. We're going to be doing a quick video here on this atheist. I was watching a debate and I just stopped it at this one spot and I wanted, decided to make a video about it. I haven't gone into it all the way. Uh, but I thought the, the first couple of questions that he came up with, uh, this is like an opening for the atheist. You know, the Christian had a, has his opening and now the atheist is doing his opening. And this guy's actually pretty popular, apparently, and uh, he's got like 267,000 subscribers. And I think the only reason for that is just simply he's young, uh, and he's got a British accent, or English accent. I don't know what you call that, uh, that, that accent, but uh, I think that's the only reason why he's popular. Uh, it can't be because of his thinking, or that he's smart. Clearly he's not. Uh, you, you'll find out in the first two questions that I put on here. Had he done any, any at all, searching for these answers, he would not have had this as his opening or his question thing here or presentation to, to the crowd. And you have to understand, like, these are such simple ones. You would think an atheist coming to a debate and doing his opening and refuting that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. So here he's going to be refuting the Bible, that it, the Bible has contradictions in there. So that, that's going to be his first two uh, things in here. Had he done any study at all, or even just watched videos on YouTube, he would have realized this is horrible. And these, when atheists present something like this, they usually bring their strongest evidence, like the, the obviously like hard to believe kind of things, right? These are silly. These are, these are childish. Well, maybe he, well, he is a child. Um, I don't know exactly how old he is. He doesn't look more than, I would say 21 to 25. At best, uh, it's so childish. I would, I would, I think if I'm going to be doing more videos on this guy, I'm going to call him the Mr. Bean of atheism because he kind of looks like Mr. Bean to me. And it, he's then it just reminds me of this is like a Mr. Bean trying to be intelligent. <laughs> so, and this is the result. This is what you would get if Mr. Bean tried to be intelligent. So I'll play the, the video here and you guys will just see the, the absolute childlike thinking that this person has. This evening, the gospel accounts are, for a start, contradictory and filled with mythology, even in just the resurrection story. Uh, for instance, we can talk about the empty tomb. How many women discovered the empty tomb? The gospel of John says it was one, Matthew two, Mark three, and Luke even more than that. Now this may seem a completely irrelevant, a, a complete irrelevancy. And of course, it doesn't uh, affect the story in, in, in any uh, significant manner. However, remember what we're talking about here. We're talking about the inspired word of God reporting on what is the single most important event in human history, if true. And I think that internal consistency is the very least we could expect from the sources which we're relying upon to provide us with evidence for that. Uh, so the amount of women that were at the tomb is, uh, is his question here. Uh, there is no contradiction in the scriptures of how many women actually were at, at, at the tomb. There is none at all. So the Gospel of Mark says uh, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Solomon went to uh, Sal Salome, went to the tomb on Sunday morning, or on uh, the first day of the week. Uh, let's see. Then the Gospel of Matthew says that Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to the tomb. So those are the two there. So just, rem uh, just remember the names here and then you will see. So the Gospel of Luke says that Mary Magdalene, Mary of uh, Jacob, let's see here. Uh, Gospel of Luke says that Mary Magdalene, Mary of Mary of Jacob, Joanna, and other women went to the tomb. And the Gospel of John says that Mary Magdalene went to the tomb. Um, 
the last one here, uh, that's a very interesting one. See, when, when uh, John is reporting on Mary Magdalene, she runs to the disciples and she goes and tells them that, uh, that uh, they have taken the Lord. And there's a very key word in there that she says to those disciples, all right? So John is just writing about Mary Magdalene, her report, okay, as to what uh, uh, happened with Mary Magdalene. So Mary Magdalene sees that Jesus is gone. She runs to the to the disciples and says, they have taken our Lord, and we know not where they have taken him. So the we is very important here. Because sure, John is only talking about Mary, but Mary mentions that there's more women at the tomb. So there's no contradiction there. So, and then if you want to really th focus on this, like let's just say this is the really, um, the standard over here is how the Gospels must have been written by these other disciples. John clearly just focused on Mary Magdalene, all right? And the events that happened with her. Uh, Luke says Mary Magdalene, Mary of Jacob, Joanna, and other women. So there was even more women than, than just Mary Magdalene, Mary of Jacob, Joanna, and other women went to the tomb. So, but he focuses more on just these three. Okay, so there's no problem there. It, the Gospels and how they, these people are going to report it is up to them. They're going to take people of, uh, you know, maybe had interviewed them and, and found out what they, what they witnessed there and stuff like that. And then they focus more on certain types of things. And then um, the Gospel of Matthew says that Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to the tomb. So he is just focusing on Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. You don't need to report on every single account. Who did you talk to and stuff like that? What stuck out to you? Remember, they are now writing the Gospels and Jesus says, and I will bring all, like, everything in remembrance. You know, like, that he's going to, you know, um, remind them of certain things that they can write down. So this is what stu uh, stuck out to Matthew. That's what stuck out to Luke. That's what stuck out to John. Uh, and the other one is uh, Matthew, Mark. And, the, you know, and the other one is Mark. Uh, that's what stuck out to Mark. So... Yeah, Mark's, it says, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome, Salome went to the tomb and stuff like that. So he remembered these three, okay? So whatever was brought to remembrance to these people, that's what they wrote down. And it's most likely who they talked to and stuff like that, maybe who they hung around with a little bit more. But John, clearly, and I think that... Um, that really stuck out because he mentions John in this, that there was only one woman, an account of one woman. So what if John just took the one woman? Why would he have to rehash uh, other stuff if the other Gospels already have it in there? Now he's focused possibly just most, mostly on Mary Magdalene and what she had said. Maybe that's what stuck out to him and was brought to his remembrance to write down in the Gospels. It's just as simple as that. No contradictions uh, at all, you know. Um, so I would say there's no, no contradictions in here at all, because if you notice, uh, none of the gospels say only these people went. None of them say that only these certain people went. They just reported on certain people, but it didn't say only these people went. So. It, it still leaves room like yeah there there might have been more women but these are the ones that stuck out these are the ones I'm reporting on and so on and then you also notice in every single one of those gospels Mary Magdalene is in every single one of them so that speaks volume obviously Mary Magdalene was in every single one of them but they didn't feel the need to report everything about Mary Magdalene John did that must have really stuck out to John so that's got no contradiction at all in there. So there's, uh, this is important is because uh, in one of my other videos, no, you know, silence does not make 
a contradiction. Just because somebody does not report on something, that doesn't mean that there is a contradiction in that report, in that um, uh, part of the story there. Just because somebody doesn't mention something, that doesn't mean that it didn't happen, right? For instance, if, like, yeah, if I went to a party and somebody asked, well, who was all there? And then I just mentioned just a few people that really stuck out to me. Well, this and this person was there and that person was there. And then that person goes and talks to somebody else. Well, who was at this party? Well, this person, that person, that person. Well, wasn't this person there? Uh, I don't remember. But that doesn't mean that he wasn't there. The ones that I reported on. That just means he didn't notice it. It wasn't a significance to him. Maybe I was friends with this person and this person wasn't. Maybe I talked to this person. This person never talked to this person. Yet. It could be just as simple as that. It's just how are you going to report the story? No contradiction. It's just what did I What's, what stuck out to me? You know, do I know everybody there? No. Did I know everybody's name? No. It's, it could be anything like that. So there's no contradiction. But what you would have to understand with atheism is this. Uh, let's just say, for instance, perfect, perfect um, uh, description of what happened at the tomb. Every single one of those Gospels completely 100% lined up. Every single woman, same names. All the events, same thing. Let's just say, for instance, the whole entire Gospel. All right? All four Gospels, 100% the same. Well, what would you call that then? Well, they were colluding. So you're, you're never going to satisfy an atheist, and that's why I say, I think this guy calls himself more or less a, well, skeptic. He, the, atheists are not skeptics. Not one single bit. You know, here's this contradiction. Why aren't you skeptic about this contradiction? Why didn't you look into it? If you're, you're, you're a skeptic. Look into these things. If somebody says, there, there's a contradiction here. Well, I'm skeptical. I'll check it out myself. But clearly, the Mr. Bean of atheism is just a joke. Okay? This guy just does not want to do anything. This is more or less just a, a Mr. Bean video at best. Okay? That's a best is a Mr. Bean video. Uh, you know, the level of, of intelligence that this guy has. So no, no contradictions there at all. Every single one of them, they just decided to report differently about what was at the tomb there, what came to the remembrance, so on and so on. That's it. Maybe they only talked to a few people, a few women about, you know, uh, the empty tomb, you know. What what happened there? Maybe certain women talked to certain people, you know, about what happened at the tomb there and stuff like that. It could be anything. But instead of just, uh, you know, I'm going to leave this one alone because they clearly have an answer for this. I'm just going to say it's, it's a contradiction. This is the level of a Mr. Bean atheist. Now we'll go to another one. This one's a doozy. This one is a doozy. I think you guys will really enjoy this one because this is uh, Mr. Bean suffering a concussion. <laughs> this is the Mr. Bean suffering concussion level of intelligence right here. A current. Uh, there are also uh, other instances that, that, that makes us uh, that, that should make us skeptical that these are historical documents, such as the fact that it's only in the book of Matthew that there is uh, uh, presented uh, the idea that there was a great earthquake and that angels moved the stone away from the tomb and allowed Jesus to rise from the dead. You would have thought that the other gospel uh, writers would have at least noticed that, and if they did, probably would have included it in their narratives, but they didn't. Oh, well, that, that's just, this is not the one that was actually talking about. It's going to be this next one. Well, just like I, like I said again, an argument of silence isn't uh, necessarily that it's wrong or that it's a contradiction or whatever the case is. Some just don't do that. Some just, now, if every single one of them would have reported that, would that have changed his mind? No, it wouldn't have changed his mind. Not one single bit. One person reported that. Maybe that's just stuck out to him a little bit more than, than, other, than the other uh, four disciples that wrote about it. Um, elsewhere in the Gospels, you've got uh, contradictions, not just uh, related to the, yes. to the resurrection. This is going to be the doozy. And story, uh, for instance, uh, the story of Lazarus, uh, Lazarus, who in the book of John is raised 
uh, to prove that Christ is, is, uh, is who he says he was. Okay, Lazarus, who Jesus raised, to prove who he said he was, okay? That's the Lazarus he's talking about. Was, um, and yet in the book of Luke, the same Lazarus first is revealed to be, in fact, a fictional The same Lazarus, that's what he said. ...character, because he appears first in a parable. Uh, and secondly, when uh, it is asked if Lazarus can be raised, Jesus says, no, he shouldn't be. Um, because if they're not going to listen to Abraham and the prophets, then they're not going to be persuaded by that either. And that is just a blatant contradiction. So, did you guys get that? He compared Lazarus, uh, that whom Jesus loved, okay? This is when Jesus was alive, all right? He compared that Lazarus to the Lazarus that went to Abraham's bosom, and the king wanted Lazarus to go warn his brothers. Not that Jesus had wanted to raise him. The king wanted Lazarus to be raised and to go warn his brothers. So he thinks that they're both fictional characters, I'm thinking. Or he says one is represented as real, but then another gospel represents it as um, a mythology. It's not a mythology. It actually literally happened. Okay, Jesus is, is reporting on something possibly that happened in his time. I doubt it. I think it happened way before, you know, probably in the Old Testament somewhere. I'm not sure where, uh, where along the lines it happened, but Jesus is reporting on an event that did happen. There was a king and there was a very poor man named Lazarus and the dogs licked his wounds. He died, went to Abraham's bosom. The king died, went to hell and wanted a, uh, Lazarus to be raised up to warn his brothers not to come to this place. And Abraham said, uh, if they believe not the prophets or something, I, I don't want to misquote it, but how shall they believe one that is raised from the dead? That's basically what the, the summarization is up in that verse, right? Or in that, uh, that story. So that is not the Lazarus. So he's saying they're the same. It's like this guy doesn't think that there is more than one Lazarus. Are you for real? You know, you can think of three Marys right off, like right around Jesus' time that was very closely uh, tied to um, uh, to Jesus, and you can't you you have a, a doubt that there could be two Lazaruses, and who knows how much of a time span. Like, this is Mr. Bean, at best, Mr. Bean comical atheism right here. And I, like I said, I only say Mr. Bean because he kind of reminds me of Mr. Bean. He's just a, you know, a, a Mr. Bean that's just trying to be smart here. It, it's, it's absolutely ludicrous. I don't know what you guys think. This is just the, the most sloppy. Like, like I said, you come into a, a, a debate and you bring your Goliaths of arguments, right? Like, these are my Goliaths. How, like, I'm going to tear you down with these things right here. And this is petty. This is, this is bringing, uh, this is bringing, uh, you know, uh, a butter knife to war, <laughs> you know, with... People who have machine guns, tanks, missiles, and you got a butter knife. You're bringing a butter knife to this thing. I don't know. I just thought when I heard this, it was, I couldn't believe it. I just couldn't believe it. Let me know what you guys think down below. Uh, I'm going to watch the rest of this, see if there's anything else I can comment on. Uh, and then we'll take it from there. But I just figured I had to put this up. And this is the new atheism. So you had the New Atheism, which was Richard Dawkins, Christopher Hitchens, uh, uh, Sam Harris, and there's, there's somebody else. I don't know exactly which other ones there were, but there was like the Four Horsemen. I don't remember who they all were. but So you had them, and now they're dying off, basically irrelevant. And now you have these comical teenagers thinking that they're smart. I don't even know why anybody would want to debate this guy. Like, seriously. Yeah, he's got a lot of subscribers. Okay, I get it. But this is like... 
this is an unfair fight. Like, this guy is just, uh, I, I don't think he thinks past this guy's nose. I don't think he thinks past his nose. But that's just me. And I'll just put this up. And uh, like, share, subscribe. Dislike doesn't really matter to me. But this is just comical. <laughs> At best, it's comical. He should be called the, the comical skeptic, not the cosmic skeptic. It should be just called the comical skeptic. That's it. Like, and you're not even skeptical about what you think about these stories? Like, you didn't even look into it first? Bring your Goliath. This is, don't bring your butter knife to a gunfight. You bring your gun. <laughs> but if this is the best that you got for contradictions in the Bible, that's sad. All right, thank you guys very much, and hope you guys liked the video. Uh, like I said, like, share, subscribe, dislike, doesn't really matter to me. And uh, thank you guys for watching.